Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Mike. Thanks for jumping on here with me today. You know, great agents thrive in all markets. Great agents thrive in all markets because they pivot and adapt to the market in which they find themselves. They don't stand around bitching and howling at the moon and wishing things would change and complaining about it. They just change and adapt. That's what they do. You'll probably hear that from me constantly over the next year. So go ahead and get used to it because it's going to be a reoccurring drumbeat. Uh, many of you know last week I attended the Real Trends Conference in Colorado Springs and one of the reasons I do that is because um, that one in particular is very expensive to attend but is a collection of industry leaders and I want to know what they think is going to happen over the next one, three, and five years. Uh, nobody knows for sure, obviously, but some of these people, especially the economists, get paid a lot of money to analyze data and trends, and I want to know what they think is going to happen. And then I want to put all that into like a mixing bowl and try to bring back the relevant points to you, because some of it is just pure speculation and junk, and some of it's actually very real and tangible. And that's what I'm talking to you about this week in hopes that you'll take some of this content content and put it in your own format and share it with your folks so that you're the top of mind credible expert with your target audience. So here's, uh, let me just kind of run down some, some of the, uh, what I thought relevant, legitimate, likely uh, predictions that I heard from all the different people that I listened to last week. Interest rates. Interest rates are probably going to settle in somewhere during the second half of this year around six to six and a half percent, which is going to feel very high, but in reality is still very low. Uh, but that's probably what you can expect. Um, interesting uh, point, uh, I thought, was the average time that people stay in their homes. So this started out when I got into the business, it was about seven years. And then over time, it's increased to about 10 years, the average time people spend in their homes. And what we're seeing now is that time is increasing to about 13 and a half years. And you're going to see how we're feeling this every day in just a minute or so. Um, but the average time people will stay in their homes is about 13 and a half years. And perhaps your neighborhood's similar to mine. You can see this going on all around us with the large number of home improvement projects. I know I've done quite a few over the past year. I know I watch my neighbors doing a lot. Uh, People are deciding to improve their current home rather than sell and move to a new home. Uh, demand for housing is going to remain high in some regions. So this won't be even across the country. Uh, the Sun Belt states, particularly the Southeast, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, South Carolina, uh, Texas and Arizona, these states should experience stronger demand as population shift continues to occur, population migration. Uh, so some eight regions of the country, ours in particular, will experience higher demand than others. Um, the increased cost of borrowing, however, and the average time that people are spending in homes, the increase in the number of years people stay in their current home, are going to cause inventory to remain low. These are the primary contributing factors to low inventory levels. Uh, it just costs too much to buy the next house. If I refinanced over the past few years and I've got a 3% interest rate and to buy the new, bigger, better, fancier new home, I'm going to have to move to a 6% interest rate. The borrowing cost might make that uh, unattractive to me. Uh, so we're going to continue to stay in our home. This will keep inventory levels down. But the sustained level of high demand, especially for this region of the country, for us, is going to cause an increase in home prices, according to everybody that I listened to last week, an increase in house prices in Atlanta uh, about 8 to 10 percent. Uh, so it's not the 20 to 30 percent that we've been experiencing. It'll calm 
a bit. The higher borrowing cost will cause it to calm a bit. Uh, but still, 8 to 10 percent in Atlanta for home price appreciation is still really strong, where historically, over the course of my career, you could expect it to be about 2.5, maybe 3 percent. And we talk about 8 to 10 percent as being a decline. Well, that's amazing because that's still three times higher than what I've experienced over the course of my career. So demand's going to remain high, and because demand's going to remain really high for the southeast, and inventory is going to remain low, prices are going to continue to increase. That's, I guess, sad news for all the people that have been waiting for prices to crash so they could go out and scoop up a deal. And that's not anywhere on the horizon. Um, but because inventory is going to remain low and borrowing costs are going up, transactional volume, the number of homes that we sell over the next 12 months, is estimated to decline 13 to 15 percent. Now some of you, if you've entered the business within the last 10 years, you don't know anything about a decline. The stock market declining is shocking to you. Uh, the housing market calming could be shocking to you. It's just been more each year. Next year will be better than this year. It's not likely to be true over the next 12 months. The shift, as they like to reference it right now, it's just a shift. It's a calming. would be lower numbers. Um, who's in for bad news? Uh, the second home market is undoubtedly in for bad news. If you're an agent and you're working in a second home market, a lake, a mountain, uh, ocean uh, market where it's not primary residence, so some places in Florida uh, people are migrating and retiring there or changing their primary residence there, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the person that wants the weekend house at the lake or the beach or in the mountains. Uh, because of the increase in borrowing cost and the volatility in the stock market, that part of the housing market is about to get spanked. Uh, the luxury market might be right there with it. The luxury market now, it used to be 850. I would say the luxury market now in Atlanta is over a million. Uh, that market could experience some significant disruption too as stock market volatility and higher borrowing cost unusually impact those people. Not so much the lower priced home markets. If you're buying your first home, what's going on on Wall Street might be interesting to watch on the news to you, but you probably really don't have that much money in the stock market. So it's news, but it's not personally impactful as much as it would be in the luxury home bar market. Uh, something for you to, to, to consider, builders are not going to solve this problem. Builders, new home construction is not going to solve this problem. Uh, why? Well, lack of available labor to build the homes would be a reason. Uh, increasing cost of materials and the volatility in cost of materials is another reason. And regulatory control is another reason. It just drives the cost of construction so high. And uh, with economic theories all over the place, you can't blame builders for being a tad bit conservative. So we can't look to new construction to solve our low inventory. Um, my final note here for this morning is investor demand is going to remain really high. Uh, there's a belief in the large investor community that especially for the southeast part of the United States the demand for rental housing is going to remain incredibly high as populations continue to move here. Uh, the borrowing costs are going to remain are going to stay higher forcing many people to stay in a, a rental lifestyle and rental rates are expected to go up about 18 percent in the Atlanta market for 2022. So expect long-term investor demand to be to remain very high. So 
what's this mean to us and how do we pivot if we want to be great agents and we want to thrive in all markets how do we pivot well i'm going to offer you uh, one view on it today and then tomorrow i'll spend some more time on this but you might be familiar with the old saying that a rising tide lifts all boats a rising tide lifts all boats mm, that's true that's true great markets make people who aren't even really fully engaged and a hundred percent in giving their all it still allows them to be successful some of you may have entered the real estate market in the last few years and you've experienced this you've experienced unusual success and you don't you're a little embarrassed by it and it makes you feel a little uncomfortable because you know inside you that you're really not applying yourself like you should be a rising tide lifts all boats. Well, Warren Buffett adds on to that. Warren Buffett says, yeah, that's true, but when the tide goes out, you can tell who's been swimming naked. So how do we pivot? Um, I think a lot of us may have been swimming naked for the last few years, and we're about to get exposed. I think the way we pivot for right now is that we double down on our efforts. We start taking our business a little bit more seriously and realize that uh, we might have to start being a little bit more diligent, a little bit more disciplined in our approach to our business for the one to three years ahead so that we can continue to thrive and continue to do well, though it might not be quite as easy as it's been in the past. Where all I have to do is get somebody to basically list their house with me at any price at any price and it'll sell the first weekend or all I have to do and I don't even really have to tell them because they watch the news as my home buyers will just bid as much as they possibly can and borrow every dollar they can from every source to get the home and they are willing to do that of their own accord and very diligent and very motiv motivated and the biggest problem I've had is we just can't we get beat out on the offers uh, it might not be so easy on both sides of the transaction going forward we might have to be a little bit more disciplined a little bit more diligent and acquire more skills to deal with the softening marketplace and by doing all that folks you know what we're gonna do we're gonna go out and we're gonna make it happen for ourselves today